here it is put together. You might notice there's a bolt missing out of here. That's because when I got these balls counter sink, uh, one had a damaged head. But that should be okay. Oh, and when on the one online, this like edge in here won't be so deep. Okay. Uh, so there's one, two, three, four cutting blades of this type and an e-bike motor of this type. Right, I'm going to see if this will shred at all. It should do. It did on one cutting blade. I'm hoping that four cutting blades will be at least four times better. Let me zoom in a bit. Okay, turn it on now. And this this is one of this is like one of the iterations of this part here, like the connection part. See how it has a bolt head shape on it to go into the 22mm bolt that goes through here that all the cutting blades are connected to. Anyway, I'm just gonna drop this in. Just riding on this on top of the spikes, just riding on top of the spikes there with no pressure on it. See how it rotates a bit there. Right, well obviously with no no pressure on it pressing down. This is I think this is about 50% infill. Now I have to be very careful here. Just a second, let me get my more wrench to hold this. There's what I always term as a mole wrench. I call it mole because that's the make. Mole. I've had these long time. You can clip them on things like the hand vise, some known as a hand vise. And that's on there, clipped on there, pretty solid as you can see. You can shake that about. Right, let's get on with it. Stop procrastinating now. I'll make sure that the metal, although these are cutting blades for metal, I don't want them touching the metal, touching the cutting blades. Let me get right, turn it back on. So I'm pressing quite a bit here, I'm getting quite a bit of vibration. Have a look. The blades are like rotating towards us at the top, so it's wanting to push this part towards us. hacking at it a bit but not not as good as what I hope. to put it like on the back end of this because the blades are turning this way in it? so that's done a flat edge on there
to pull it away from the camera. But the grip of those teeth in this plastic is really pulling it towards the camera. I'm having to push quite firmly here. Let's have a look underneath, I think. Plastic there in the teeth. Right, let's have a look in, the, in this ball I put underneath. This was empty. Oh yeah. Fair amount of spores. Again, quite finely shredded. Probably ideal for going into a homemade extruder, so, um, well, you know, filament making gear, I think. It's if I fail, uh, just look, just warm, just, you know, like normal temperature, not hot. Let me get another piece, I'll just show you this. You see the infill there, quite at least 50% infill. You see how it's flattened that edge off there. That's two pores on the other side. Hmm. Okay, let me get a different piece of plastic to see if. Right, I'm going to try this. This is like a back and plate for the hot end. The hot end clips on there. This is one iteration. The wires come up here and put tie wraps around. Uh, it's like the blow air all around the hot end under the part. This is just a back and plate. One of the iterations. Let's see if we can knock that this part off here. Up, oh, it's jammed. And turn it on a bit. See now, the question is, is it just these, like washers slipping in here, which I do want it to jam and slip like that rather than break the blades. Um, I have no reverse on this. Let me try doing it by hand actually. I'll do that off camera. Because I can sometimes turn this connection piece that connects from the sprocket in on here to the big bolt head, 22 mil bolt head there. Right, I tried turning that and I couldn't turn it. But what I've done is swap the wires over. So now we've got negative going to positive, positive going to negative there. As you can see, 12 volts here. This is, this is a 12, 24 volt motor, so this should turn backwards if it's going to turn it on. Grab hold on this and hold it a certain way. Yep. Well, that got that out there easily, so it certainly needs a reverse and switch on. Let me try doing it back on positive, swap the wires over. I'll do that off video, so to speak. So just swap the wires back, positive to positive, red to red, black to black. As I say, 12 volts there. Okay, plugged in. This is one problem maybe with having two lots of counter-rotating blades is that it's 
going to take an awful lot more probably uh, HP than this one horsepower um, you know it's going to take maybe two horsepower or something to do that so right let's get this back on so now it's going forward what's happened there jammed. It's jamming somewhere. The motor is not turning there. Now I'm not sure I'll have to dismantle it all. But I'll try it in reverse again to cleave it out. Right, I've put the wires as it should be, negative to negative, positive to positive. Now if I put that in there it's going to drag forward and pull that into here and then it's going to jam that's what I'm saying about two counter rotating blades they're just going to in this case they're just going to jam against each other using this motor here um, let me turn this round so that's for the BL touch but this is just an iteration Jam straight away, look. Mm. Oh, it's jamming. Let me have a look underneath. Um, anyway, let's maybe see what's in the bowl. Not too bad. Oh, just a second. Bigger blades would presumably have bigger parts. Let's have, a, have I unplugged this? Just let me double check before I do anything else. Well, I can't see how it's jamming. The only thing I can think of here is when it did jam, because the shaft was turning but the blades weren't, it, made these half nuts, there's just two half nuts there with um, well watch it back into the video, Nord washes on and they're tightened up against each other, it might have loosened one of those off anyway I think that's about as far as I'm going to go with this to be honest with you These cutting discs do have a key weighing, same as the, the sprocket that's in here for the motor. It has a key weigh sort of thing in to make sure that the sprocket actually turns. So you could somehow put a key weigh in there and that would force them to turn if the motor could cope with that, which is a bit doubtful even with this big e-bike motor here so all in all I class that as mm, a fail I mean it does work to a fashion as you've seen it was cutting this and it didn't make a reasonable amount of uh, shards of plastic I was hoping it would work with four blades I was hoping it would work four times faster but 
doesn't seem to I'm going to talk a bit about putting the blades on here. This is 22mm bolt which has this connection piece fitted on. There's a big bearing in this side as well, one of these bearings. I'll put some details here. The, this is a half nut here. Okay, and first of all we're going to put what is known as a, a Nord lock, lock and washer which has like groove teeth in both sides, it's a little bit sort of concave or convex, whichever way you look at it, put that on that nut then I'm going to put a cutting disc, oops, one of these cutting discs ok, very sharp so be careful and I'm putting it so that it will cut when it's turning anti-clockwise if we're looking from the motor end from the end you're looking at it there pop that on then I'm going to put a shake proof washer on I'm going to put another cutting blade on Oops. when I can get hold of them make sure it goes the right way around oh, I don't know about line, whether to line these up the teeth alternative then put another shake proof washer on so the shake proof washer will help stop it turning but also give it a bit of a gap another cutting blade this is getting wide this another shake proof washer And this is the final cutting blade. So I'm just going to line those up, almost alternative, alternating. Then going to put a nod, another nod, like lock and washer on this side. Okay, going that way. Then these are. 22 mil half nuts. Now these do have markings on them, putting the markings on the outside there. Screw that down. Just going to finger tighten that. Well, not even finger tight really, just to hold it. Now let me find the other half of this. See how well this fits. I don't expect it to fit at all actually. It's a right one, isn't it? Mm. Oh, I've got some um, 6 mil bolts here. I think these are 130, might be 135. I'll put some details here. And they've got washers on. I wish I'd put them in the other way actually. Because here, if you want to take them out, see the banging. Uh, they're banging against the motor gearbox here. Something I didn't really contemplate. Right, I'm going to screw these, these, these screw in a bit, but there's no threads on there, but they should all slide in actually. Sometimes you might have to screw them. I'll come back when I get these balls in, okay? Well, I'll put the balls in. I put two, two in going that way because they're easy to get in at the bolt heads. These are shake proof, like nine lock washers, er, uh, balls. Um, well, put this bearing on, but what I found is that these two nuts, half nuts, are actually rubbing against the edges of the plastic. So I'm going to have to redesign this a bit so that. There's a cutout for the nuts, I think. But these will squeeze together on the shake proof nut washers a bit, but don't ever flatten, well, totally flatten shake proof washers because then there's no point in having them, it's the teeth that bite. 
before I do that, let's see if I can get this bearing on. I have to be careful here because these are very sharp indeed, these blades. Well, I tried tightening it up. I mean, it's can turn now. I've only just tightened it up enough. So those uh, shake, shake washers can be compressed a bit. But don't compress them too far because then you lose the teeth biting in. So I can turn that by hand. I mean, this is slightly loose, these nuts here. What I'm going to have to do is actually, when I, I'll redesign this so that there's a cutout for these nuts a bit so that I can go in a bit more. I can do that, I think. But what I intend to do, actually, is see if this will fit on here. This is what I could term as a wear plate. So that goes on there and this is it quite well relatively easy to remove just screws in so if it's getting worn down any of the plastic in a way you can just print that out and replace that so that's the wear plate there i'll screw that on should i what i think i'll do actually is get this turning so that it starts wearing down the plastic on each end so I'll put that big bearing in there, these details about the bearing, as you see there is a bearing in this side as well, same bearing, so put that on, put that Nord washer on, put another nut on there, won't, I'll tighten these up but I won't have it too tight here. Um, these more wrenches will not really get in at those nuts by the way. Wide or what have you. So just see if we can tighten that one up against that one. I did this before and uh, somehow I can't remember how I did it. I don't know how good these Nord washers are to be honest with you, but in the test they've been okay. Oops, so let me see. Oh, that's that will turn, but it is quite stiff to turn, well, it's quite hard to turn than it would be with all the gears in the motor, so to speak. So I'm hoping it should turn that way if I put positive on positive, negative to negative. 12 volts I'm going to be using this from. And this is all this is going to go at the back end of the video, so you don't have to suffer watching it. And there's a hopper here, which I need to have holes in there. Basically, that goes on here to um, catch any, well, put any plastic in, right? I'm going to use it like this just to wear in the plastic on each edge and I'll probably tighten these up a bit as I go so it gradually wears it down. I don't know how long that's going to take. Okay, you want to see this turning here just now. So you have to be very careful because these are razor sharp these cutting discs for cutting metal, st uh, splitting metal and such like milling machines. Okay, I've got positive to positive, negative to negative. Um, so it should be turning away from us. It might be hard to tell because of the strobing of the camera. Let's turn it on, get ready to turn it off in case it jams up or rips the bits or something. No, oh, I jumped a little bit the motor there. So it's moving a bit. So as I say, this is turning like this way around, like the blades facing that way. I could swap the wires over and have it going the other way. I do intend to have a reverse switch on here in case it does get jammed. If you look at this motor, you might see it moving slightly. I mean that is wobbling a bit, so it's not total centre. 
So I'm hoping that doing this will get those nuts, two big half nuts there, wearing the plastic edge down a bit. And then I'm going to tighten up these longer nuts, these six millimetre nuts there, when it's turned off, obviously. I let it run like this for about five, 10 minutes. And then I'll tighten it up a bit, another 10 minutes, tighten it up a bit until this is totally tight. And there's, hopefully there's still enough loose to um, you know, turn and that. Sorry about the strobe in there. Right, let that go for quite a few minutes. Then I'll tighten it up. When I've done all that, I'll come back and I'll let you know what's what. But this, this is touching there, just touching there. And that plastic part is just touching there. So it's not too bad as it is. Since I've tight, managed to tighten those two half nuts up against each other to squeeze these shake washers or whatever they're called, shake proof washers or something they're called in between there. Now I have to be very careful here, this will easily rip you to bits, no problems there. Right, I'll tighten it up a bit, I'll just do, like I said, let it go for 10 minutes, tighten the four bolts up to squeeze it tighter because they're a bit loose at the moment and then another 10 minutes and so on and so on. I am a little bit worried about the sprocket in here that will wear out the plastic. This sprocket has a keyway in it and it has a bit of a ledge on it and you, it is possible I reckon to remove that socket I'm just put two sockets the same size but no like ledge on. But by putting two almost plates in there, sockets, sprockets I mean, then it's going to double the width of the teeth touching the plastic and that will help grip and stop any wear. That's one thing that concerns me is the wear of that sprocket in there. As I say, it's only a single one on that, especially when we start cutting plastic over any length of time. This is 12 volts by the way, this is a 24 volt motor, here's some details for an e-bike. Here your box as you see, I reckon this is going about 300 rpm here by the time it gets through the gear, which is about 10 to 1, and I think this is a 3000 rpm motor. But there's the details here. So it might look like it's turning in a way anti-clockwise to the way we're looking at it now. Sorry, clockwise in the way we're looking at it now. Because of this, this has ridges on to help you grip it by hand. This plastic connection piece here, which basically goes from the sprocket gear that's on here.
to the board head. Okay. So that might look like it's going uh, clockwise, but actually it is going anti-clockwise. That's throwing off the camera. We'll watch that a bit. Two more seconds. So the motor, as I say, is moving slightly there. I might be able to line it up a bit better if I can be get round to doing it. This is all prototyping, so forgive anything like that.